This fly is an Adams, and I'm starting off with a size 12 dry fly hook, and to it I'm going to add some ADOT black thread. I'll give a couple of turns there just to get it nice and secure, and bring it uh, just a, a maybe a third of the way or a quarter of the way past the eye. And the next piece that I'm going to tie in is the wings. And for the wings of this fly, I like to use a relatively inexpensive uh, neck hackle. And for this, I don't mind uh, getting a grade or two less uh, because I don't want to waste my, my good hackle if I'm just going to be harvesting it for the tips. So I'll pull off two sizes that are about the same. And if you pull them off in pairs, just like goose bites, they want to lie together. So I'm just going to take those and put them on their backs so that gives you that natural V. I don't do a whole lot of cleaning off of the under hackle with this and the reason I don't is because it gives me a better tie-in. If you if you pull everything back and expose the stem sometimes it wants to it wants to turn uh, when you start to, to wrap the thread. So I'm just taking it and I just start to peel back not off just peel back some of that some of that hackle until I get the approximate length that I'm looking for which is ultimately going to be the height of your wing. And then I'll use that natural V just to place one on either side of the hook and start to make a couple of securing wraps. And once I'm happy with the way that they're secured facing forward I can come back and clip off the rest of the stems. Finish taking my wraps back through to make sure they're not going anywhere and now I can stand them up. So I'll stand them straight up and make a slight ball of thread in front of them to get them to stand up even more so. There'll be some hairs that come along with that or some fibers that come along with that and that you can always trim off kind of as you go. careful not to cut your thread and once they're standing up you can see how they look from the top I can split these even further if I take my thread and start to put them in between one another so I'll take two kind of gentle turns through those feather tips those hackle tips and then my securing wraps are the ones that I do coming straight down. So that's how they look now stood up. So I'm happy with those. So I'm going to take uh, two different pieces of hackle here. One is going to be uh, a grizzly hackle and the other is going to be a brown or furnace hackle and I'll take two big sections off because those are going to be my tail material so I've got one large size of each I'm going to pull these back and take some fibers from each of them and just match up the tips So now I've got this blend of both brown and grizzly hackle. I'm going to measure it out so that it is the approximate length of the hook shank. I'm going to put those tips right in between, or the, the butt sections right in between the tips that are standing up. And I'm just going to measure here for length. Once I'm happy, I'm going to tie this right on top down to the barb and back up. I'm going to come through and snip off these butt sections. And finish making my securing wraps. 
Now I'll bring it down to just about the point of the hook and I'm going to start tying in my dubbing. And for this you can use a lot of different types of materials. I'm just going to use a natural gray uh, dry fly dubbing here to give me the taper that I'm looking for. If you want to get nice tight wraps of this dubbing you can always wet your fingers and that's going to compress the material and give you nice tight, nice tight wraps. So now I can just start to dub the body of this fly. Just a nice little taper here. And I'm going to take just a little more, take it all the way up to behind those tips sticking out. Once I've gotten there, then I'm going to take a, another section from both of my hackles. I'm going to take two that are the size that I'm looking for to match the hook. So in this case, I've got a size 12 hook. I want to take two size 12 hackles. So I got both of my hackles here. I'll clean up the bottoms of each. So now I've got both the tips exposed, I'm going to lay them right on top of one another and get them ready to tie in. And when I tie these in, I'm going to tie them in with the stems in between those tips that are sticking up. And the reason why I do this, if I put it to one side or the other, it runs the risk of closing that gap. So be very careful to get the wraps behind and the wraps in front. And then I like to take another pinch of dubbing and I'm going to finish dubbing behind and I'm going to make a couple of dubbing wraps in front. And then you can do this one of two ways. You can either wrap them together or wrap them separate. I'm going to wrap those um, separately. And I'm going to start with my gray. I'm just going to make three wraps of each. Behind. And then maybe two wraps in front. And then I can bring that up and tie that off. And I'll leave it in just in case it should slip off. I've got a safety net there. And I'm going to take my brown and I'm going to weave this in between. And again, doing the same two or three wraps behind. and two or three wraps in front. Bring it back into my tie-in point and make some securing wraps there. Then when I'm confident that it's not going anywhere I can come back through and clean that up. Pull everything back as 
so that I can make my thread head. And then with three or four whip finishes, this fly will be complete. trim off my thread and again whenever I'm cutting thread off when I have hackle I don't make a cutting motion I just leave the jaws open and I hold tension on the thread and slide that through so I make sure that I'm not going to cut off any of my any of my hackles I'll t put a, a just a touch of head cement on this to finish it up And I kind of come in from the side, and I'm just going to let that head cement just roll down my bobbin. Clean it off, and then clean up the eye. And this is a heavily hackled fly, so it rides well in, uh, in turbulent water. It's a good, good floating fly. You can see what it looks like from the top. See my wings, wing sections. See what it looks like from the bottom. And that is an Adams dry fly.